Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. I'm Scott Howitt. I'm the Chief Communications Officer for Orange County Public Schools. We are here today to talk about safety and security for the 2021-22 school year, which begins on Tuesday, August 10th. I should say that again, Tuesday, August 10th. School board members, Chair Teresa Jacobs is here. Uh, District one school board member, Angie Gallo, I believe is, she's on her way. Uh, and District three school board member, Linda Cobert are with us this morning. Superintendent Barbara Jenkins is here as well. Also, we have epidemiologists from the Florida Department of, Department of Health in Orange County, Alvina Chu. She will be providing us with a COVID-19 update, including quarantining and contact tracing. Orange County Sheriff John Mina will talk about security efforts in and around our schools. Also with us is Orlando Police Chief Orlando Rallone, who will talk about our joint junior law enforcement program and their efforts in keeping our schools safe. And OCPS uh, Police Chief Ryan Holmes is also here today and he'll talk about Fortify Florida and the new Alyssa Alert System in our schools. School Board Chair Teresa Jacobs will kick us off today. Madam Chair. Good morning, thank you all for joining us. On behalf of the school board, I wanna thank all of our teachers and our staff for their hard work as they prepare for the beginning of the school year. I know this past year has certainly been a challenging one, that's an understatement. We've learned a lot in this year. Unfortunately, there's still a lot to learn. We're heading into a year with more unpredictability, unpredictability and we're gonna ask for the patience of all of our partners, especially our parents and our teachers as we go through this year. And I want you to know that in spite of the uncertainty in this situation, here at Orange County Public Schools, we look forward to a positive and successful year. And <clears throat> you might wonder, how can I say that in the environment we're in? It's because I have enormous faith in this community. I have seen us time and time again put our differences aside and come together for the benefit of all others. There's no part of our community that's more important than our students. So I'm asking that our entire community, let's come together, support our children, support their school system. This is an exciting time, but it is a very stressful time. There is a great deal of debate over masks, but I want to make this extremely clear. We are urging everyone to please send your children in with masks. Again, I know this is controversial, but it is not just about your child's health, it's about everyone's health, and it's also about respect. So if you are on the fence about masks, again, I'm asking you, we're urging you, send your child in with a mask. You no doubt are aware of the superintendent's recent decision um, that the board fully supports, and that is to require a mask mandate for 30 days beginning today for all of the adults that come on our facilities. That's all of our staff, all of our teachers, that's all of our visitors. We want to do everything that we know we can do that is within our realm of responsibility at this point to keep our entire organization safe. We want our children safe, we want their families safe, our teachers safe. So we're asking everybody to please support us in this effort. We will get through this together. And now, it is my great honor to introduce the District 3 school board member who represents this school and so many others. She is a phenomenal representative, somebody who cares, cares passionately about our students and their education and has been such a champion for this district. So let me introduce school board member Linda Covert. Good morning, everyone. I want to welcome you to our beautiful campus here at Boone High School. I want to thank Principal Dusty Johns for hosting us this morning. And I'd like you to take a moment to appreciate our newly renovated gymnasium here. As you know, the renovations to our school campuses are made possible by the half penny sales tax that has been repeatedly uh, voted in by our uh, taxpayers. And we appreciate them and thank them for that. I also want to thank and wish our teachers, families, staff, parents and students, 
a wonderful school year. This is a joyful time for them. We support you and all that you are doing for our students. And now I have the pleasure of introducing our superintendent, Dr. Barbara Jenkins. Thank you, Member Covert and Chair Jacobs. I have the pleasure of serving with a phenomenal school board who is now governing during a most difficult time in our community. So I want to thank them for their steadfast support and dedication, not just to our children, but to our employees and to this entire community. I also want to thank you for being here today. Uh, Ms. Chu, Chef Mina, Chief Rowland, thank you for joining us as well. I've been working closely in preparation for the new school year. 209 students are due to show up on Tuesday. They are taken care of by 24,000 employees, 14,000 or so are teachers. We've got bus drivers, cafeteria workers, custodians, secretaries, paraprofessionals, and more who support our children. I want to commend all of them for their steadfast work on behalf of our children. Uh, we are up by about 3,000 students for this year by projection. Uh, before we dive into uh, the important topic of COVID-19 and our efforts, let me mention our new schools. For the first time since 2009, which doesn't seem that long ago, we are actually opening two new high schools. That's an indication of growth on the west side of our county. Horizon High and Lake Buena Vista High School will be relieving that overcrowding adding about 5,500 seats. Village Park Elementary will also be opening, as well as Silver Pines Academy. It's a K-12 center for our students with special needs. Uh, we are pleased at those beautiful new buildings, thanks to our taxpayers. So it brings us to 2,005 schools in OCPS. I also want to thank amazing teachers who have been in pre-planning now uh, for four days and we'll be in one more pre-planning day on Monday because students do not come until Tuesday. Let me say that again. <laughs> students' first day is on Tuesday. So staff are preparing tirelessly uh, as they prepare for our grand opening on Tuesday. Uh, we also, uh, this year providing uh, this year's challenges, we are going to provide for you our um, dashboard that will keep you, uh, I'm sorry, keep you abreast every day of any instances of COVID-19 in our classrooms. We continue to monitor it. We work closely with the Florida Department of Health in Orange County and other local officials, and we will keep our community advised. With us today to provide us a community health update is epidemiologist Alvina Chu with the Florida Department of Health in Orange County. Ms. Chu. Thank you, Dr. Jenkins. Thank you. I just want to give you a brief update about um, the community, uh, the transmission level in, within our community. We're currently at greater than 500 new cases um, per 100,000 population, which is the seven day average. And then also um, at about 20% percent positivity for tests over the seven day average. And so with this, we will continue to work with our Orange County Public School team, the health and safety team, and especially their COVID task force um, to institute the non-pharmaceutical interventions, uh, primarily to give you an update today about the isolation and quarantines and contact tracing that occur in schools. And so as we have been doing over the course of the pandemic and during the past school year, throughout summer school, and then now for the upcoming school year, we will work to help identify those uh, children and staff and persons where there may be exposures on school campuses and then recommend to those persons to be aware of their exposures and then uh, remove themselves and isolate and potentially test afterwards. As that's just one part of the non-pharmaceutical interventions that we have. The other layers that we have that are in our toolbox to help us reduce transmission during this pandemic include those things that we've continued to recommend, which is the wearing of masks to reduce transmission within uh, crowded spaces or when you're with other persons. And so we encourage parents and staff, uh, staff who are now required to wear masks indoors um, and with uh, on school campuses. But we encourage parents to make the choice to have their children wear their masks while they're in school, in addition to the other pandemic precautions that we've recommended, which is the physical distancing. So observing physical distancing between students and persons, students and staff, in addition to the good hand hygiene and uh, making sure that we wash our hands uh, frequently and including um, 
cleaning of environmental surfaces. The one boon that we have to reduction on getting some control over this pandemic is the great vaccines that we have, which are highly effective at preventing severe illness, hospitalizations, and death. And so for all of those students and staff who are eligible to receive the vaccine, we wish to encourage them to get that as soon as possible to build immunity before school starts. I'd like to... Uh, so with that, I'd like to turn it back to Dr. Johnson. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Chu. Certainly we want to do our part in encouraging the vaccine in consultation with your health care providers. We encourage both our employees as well as uh, parents to consider the vaccine, strongly consider the vaccine based on advisement from our health experts. You may um, be aware that last week on Friday we announced that we would have an incentive for our employees. It's $200 for any employee, full-time or part-time, who um, affirms to us that they have had the vaccine, fully vaccinated, can earn a $200 incentive. That's one part we can play. That money comes from federal grant dollars um, that are related to the COVID-19 pandemic. We are pleased to be able to offer that to our employees, asking them to show that proof, show that indication by October 31st. It's a simple affirmation that they will do on our wellness portal. That information is being transmitted. This week, I actually met one of our employees who has a very personal message that he has been sharing. In fact, I'm told he is getting some national media coverage as well. So let me tell you about him. Terry Greer is a PE teacher at Cypress Springs Elementary School and a COVID-19 survivor. He was in the hospital for 72 days back in January. His lungs collapsed three times and he received nearly every possible treatment. Happily, Terry is now recovered, doing very well, and started back to work uh, for pre-planning this week. I had a chance to speak with Terry and his wife, who was a second grade teacher for us at Avalon. Their story is both frightening and heartwarming. And Terry wants to share his story with people to help them understand the severity of this pandemic. Take a look at his message. Hi, I'm Terry Greer. I am a COVID-19 survivor. 72 days changed my life. COVID changed my life. I would not wish COVID on anyone. What I went through and survived is a miracle because I could have easily had a different result. I am a PE teacher with no underlying health concerns and COVID hit me hard. The vaccine was not available for me yet when I contracted the disease, but it is now. And I am happy to say I am vaccinated and my entire family is vaccinated. If you are eligible to get vaccinated, do it. I am no expert in vaccines, but I am an expert in what can happen if you are unvaccinated and contract COVID. My doctor tells me if I had been vaccinated, I would likely have never seen 72 days in the hospital. Please don't wait. I would never want you or your family to go through what my family went through. Thank you for sharing my story and stay safe. So I have to tell you, um, when Terry and his wife were speaking with me, we were on a Zoom call together. And once tearfully asked Terry, to what do you attribute your survival? He says, my wife. Then everybody in the room starts crying. They also say their entire community supported him. They had two boys who thought they would never get to see their father again once they transported him to the hospital that family um, members, I'm sorry, they have no family members here, so they had friends and community members that made sure their boys had dinner, because mom was getting home at nine o'clock most evenings when she left the hospital. And they attribute the support of Avalon Middle and Timber Creek High School, where their boys attended, as well as Cypress Creek and Avalon, uh, their schools where they work for supporting their family. We are so happy he is back and doing well with us, and I think um, the message that he shares is critical to, to be shared with many of our employees and with our community at large. I want to assure everyone that health and safety procedures will continue throughout the school year. Our measures include, most critical, please keep children home, or if you're an adult that works for OCPS, you have to stay home if you're not feeling well. As uh, our epidemiologist mentioned, we certainly want to make sure we have frequent cleaning and disinfecting in our schools, frequent hand washing, social distancing were feasible. 
the reality is with the majority of our students returning to school, as opposed to about 80% when we ended school, the opportunity for social distancing are limited. That's why we strongly encourage face masks. We, are, we also are pleased that there is access to free testing in the community, thanks to FDOH in Orange County. And we are, again, encouraging vaccination consideration in consultation with your health care providers. We've released the updated COVID-19 health and safety manual linked on our front page, lots of resources on our front page, including uh, frequently asked questions regarding opening of school. You can also get to our dashboard there, which has been reset for the new school year. Nevertheless, you can also use a link to look at last year's dashboard if you desire. Now, all those center stage these days is the COVID-19 issue and getting vaccinated. We must not forget about our other safety measures for 209,000 students about to enter our, our doorway. We have a long-standing partnership, I'm pleased to say, with all of our law enforcement agencies. Today, we will hear from Orange County Sheriff John Mina and Orlando Police Chief Orlando Erlon, and they will be followed by our own uh, Police Chief for Orange County Public Schools. Brian Holmes. Chair. Uh, thank you, Superintendent. And now uh, we are very excited at the start of the school year. Our school resource officers are excited to get back to their campuses and see their students again. And let me be uh, very clear and say this to the parents that there is nothing that's more important uh, to me and to my staff than the safety of your children at their schools. Uh, as we have for the last several years, we will have a uh, deputy at every single uh, traditional public school here in Orange County. Uh, our youth services division is made up of 190 school resource officers, corporals, and sergeants, uh, and they're responsible for, for providing bell-to-bell -bell coverage for the uh, 126 schools in Orange County jurisdictions, which is about 120 by the students, 125,000 students. Uh, and I'm confident in, in stating that we have some of the best uh, trained school resource officers uh, in the nation. Uh, all of our school resource officers go through 40 hours of crisis intervention training. Additionally, they all go through uh, SRO training and specific autism training to help them deal with uh, kids in our schools who have autism. Um, all of that training continues to pay off, and over the last uh, several years, the Orange County Sheriff's Office has been deliberate and committed to reducing the number of juvenile arrests here in Orange County. Uh, since 2015, our juvenile arrests have decreased by 67 percent. And I also want to credit uh, Superintendent, Orange County Public School staff. You know, we do uh, keep track of school threats uh, and threats to other students. Uh, uh, by students and you know if you remember last year before the start of the school year Orange County Public Schools produced a video on the consequences uh, and actions that we would take uh, if if someone were to make a threat to the school or a threat to another student and we're happy to announce that uh, as compared to last year we saw a 61 percent decrease in school threats and an 83 percent decrease in threats to students by other students. So uh, what we're doing is working and uh, we're very, very proud of that. Uh, so as far as COVID is related, of course all, all of our deputies uh, assigned to the schools will be masked and follow the, the mandates in place by Orange County Public Schools. And for our own agency, of course, uh, we're still grieving the loss of Deputy First Class uh, Craig Sejos and our, our, our hearts and uh, prayers go out to his, his families and friends and his co-workers. Uh, all of our deputies uh, are continuing to, uh, to, to get vaccinated. We've offered a three-day uh, three off incentive, uh, which means uh, for some deputies, depending on when they started, that's probably a four to $500 uh, value as well. So we've seen a, a, an uptick in vaccination for our deputies. So this time I will turn it over to Chief Rolone. Thank you, Sheriff. Um, good morning. So I want to thank the school board chair, Teresa Jacobs, the members of the Orange County School Board, the superintendent, Barbara Jenkins, for hosting this important update on health and safety for the families heading back to schools and their kids. 
So, uh, like the sheriff mentioned, it is very important to us that our school resource officers not only receive the training that is required to be an SRO, but also to have uh, the training that is needed to have conflict uh, resolution, de-escalation, kids dealing with autism. All of that is very important to us, and we are committed as Orange County agencies to providing that for our SROs. So I need to wait for the confirmation, hopefully, before we're done, but we did not have a single arrest in Orange County schools last year. That is huge, huge. And why is that? Because the officers, the SROs, are receiving that special training, additional training that is much needed in order for us to, again, diffuse situations at the school level without having to make an arrest. We are also very proud uh, to be able to announce that this year we're gonna start a new program uh, to build more bonds with our youth. The Junior Reserve Law Enforcement Program is like a junior ROTC, but for law enforcement officers. When we presented this idea to uh, the superintendent, she was gracious enough to personally participate in the uh, meetings that took place to uh, plan it out, and she supported the idea right away. It was the idea that was presented by the president of the Orlando Regional Realtors Association, uh, Mr. Long, and he said, hey, how come you don't have an ROTC program for law enforcement? And we, thought, we said, you know what, you're absolutely right, we need to explore this. So more than 300 kids from Lake Luna High School and Jones, Jones High School will participate in this program in partnership with Valencia uh, Community College, the school system, our police agency or department, and again, the private sector. Uh, they made it a reality. And these kids will be able to immerse themselves in programs that will inform them of what it's like to be a police officer and hopefully, hopefully, one day encourage them to seek a career uh, within our agencies here in our community. So it is the first, uh, the first time around for this program. We are so pleased that the overwhelming uh, uh, interest from the students and their parents at both Jones and Lake Lona High School put us in a very uh, different situation where we did not have enough money to buy all the uniforms that were needed for the kids, the initial funding that was donated by the Realtors Association. So we invested another $40,000 to make sure that these kids had the uniforms that they need because of the commitment that they have made for this program. So we'll have more about that later, and I'll finish with this. Of course, we will have new drivers out there. We'll have congested roadways around our schools. We ask that everyone be very mindful of our school stops or of our loading zones for our schools. Our officers will be out there. Uh, enforcing the laws that require you to wait for the schools uh, to load before you pass them. And of course, the drop-off zones and the loading zones to adhere to those. Uh, it, it's gonna take a little bit of a learning curve for all of us to get used to that. And for the kids to remember this, our SROs are not only there to provide the safety uh, that every child and parent expects to have at the school, but to also be there if they need to talk to someone, if they need to consult with someone, from the law enforcement profession. We're here to listen, we're here to help with whatever we can. With that said, I'll turn it over to Brian. Thank you, Chief Alone, Sheriff Mina. We know safety and security is top of mind for everyone here and our parents at home. Uh, OCPS District Police, uh, my team, work with our nine law enforcement agencies uh, to provide a safe, a learning environment for our students and staff. So plans are in place for this school year for a safe campus, and we want to remind everyone, all of our students, our staff, if you see something, say something. With that in mind, Fortify Florida was created for that exact purpose. It was funded back in 2018 by the Florida legislature as part of the Marjorie Stone Douglas High School Public Safety Act. It's a suspicious activity reporting tool that allows you to instantly relay information to appropriate law enforcement agencies and school officials. When a tip is submitted on Fortify Florida, it comes through to the police chief's phone, to the principal, school administration, the SRO, we all get it for that school. I get all of them. But with that in mind, uh, those individual agencies get it respectively. 
They get it right on their phone so it can be acted on immediately. It's really important. If you see something, say something. Uh, this year, we have produced a new Fortify Florida video explaining how to report a suspicious incident, so please uh, take a look. I just want to re-emphasize this. This is not intended to report complaints. You saw that little blip at the end. Uh, it's not about complaints because occasionally students like to use it for that. And they're quite good at complaining about things. That's not what we're here for. Actual crimes or potential criminal activity. That's what the Fortify Florida app is used for. I'm also pleased to tell you that this school year we are rolling out an emergency alert system called Alyssa's Alert. You may have heard of it. It's had quite a bit of news coverage. Uh, this tool will allow any school employee to place their campus on lockdown or report a medical emergency. Now the alert immediately connects the school employee with the county's 911 dispatch, allowing the employee to report the emergency. Uh, again, it can, it is an application. It can be downloaded onto the employee's phone. So they can have it right there, anywhere they are on campus, right with them, and they can make that report immediately. Uh, we know that second saves lives, it's very important. We're able to be, be able to do that uh, immediately. Uh, this application, again, will be available for all of our staff. Uh, it's also gonna be loaded onto any of their digital devices that are provided by the district. So their desktop computers or possibly the tablets that they use in the classroom and uh, they'll have it available there. So we're looking forward to our students returning campus this week or next week. And now I'm gonna turn it back over to uh, Scott Howitt. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and wrap up the press conference. Thank you all for being here and for getting out this very important information to our parents. We appreciate it. And there will be, like I said, staff from transportation services, facilities and maintenance, and food nutrition services here. And anyone who was uh, up here today available for one-on-ones afterward. Thank you very much and Thank you. have a great day. Let's make it a great school year.